Madam Speaker. I call the Honourable Mika Whaiteri. Madam Speaker, tēnā kuia. Nā mimba o te whare, tēnā tātou katoa. Madam Speaker, it is a privilege to be able to speak on the iwi and hapu o te rohe o te Wairau Claims Settlement Bill, a very historic bill that is before us in this House. Madam Speaker, with your indulgence, I'd like to greet the iwi of Ngāti Kahungunu in appropriate manner. E rau rangatira mā, e kui mā, e koro mā. Ana e ngā mihi, kia koutou katoa, ko tai mai i runga te kaupapa. Te kaupapa whaka nui, te kaupapa whaka hirahira, te kaupapa tika. Nō reira, e ngā mana i ngā reo, o kui rau rangatira mā, tēnā koutou nau mai, tēnā koutou nau mai, tēnā koutou katoa. Madam Speaker, getting to the House has been a journey for some today. <laughs> but nothing, Madam Speaker, compares to the journey of Ngā Hapu, Ngā Iwi, o Te Rohe, o Te Wairoa. Madam Speaker, I want to firstly acknowledge the kind words that colleagues have shared in this House. But make, may I make it very clear, Madam Speaker, there is only one kaupapa here. And this is the third and final reading of Ngā Iwi, Ngā Hapu o Te Rohe, Rohe o Te Wairo Claim Settlement Bill. And I am so privileged and honour, Madam Speaker, as the current member for Ikaro Rāwhiti, to join in with the people that have joined us here in acknowledging the passage of this bill. Madam Speaker, pleasing to be the final speaker in this bill. In this bill. Madam Speaker, may I make some acknowledgements? First and foremost, can I acknowledge the tipuna who, at the, at, uh, who suffered at the hands of the Crown, Madam Speaker, who lost lives, who lost land, and at no point without trial in prison in Te Whare Kauri. Madam Speaker, there was a pattern happening on the east coast of the North Island. Before the treaty was signed, Madam Speaker, Wairo Māori, Tūranga Māori lived an autonomous life. They, they lived under their tikanga, under their whakapapa, and managed their lands as they saw fit. Madam Speaker, in Te Wairo, despite the musket wars in 1820, we had whalers that settled in places like Te Mahia in 1830. The treaty was signed, as we all know, on the 6th of February, 1840. And it was never, ever, Madam Speaker, taken to the people of Te Wairo. There was no debate, there was no consultation for the people of Te Wairo. And in the treaty, Madam Speaker, there are three articles. The first article, depending on which version you read, the Pākehā version talked about sovereignty. The Māori one talked about kāwanatanga governance. The second part of the article promised Māori the undisturbed possession of their lands and their waterways. The third part of the article, Madam Speaker, gave the rights and protection of Māori as British subjects. Madam Speaker, in speaking to this bill, the Crown breached Article 2, breached Article 3. At no time did they talk to the people, the Māori of Te Wairo, around whether they wanted to enter into this partnership. Madam Speaker, let me be very, very clear. The treaty was not taken to Te Wairo. And after 1840, when the treaty was signed, you will see a pattern. In the 60s, as the wars went around the country, started in Taranaki, went to Waikato, Wairo Māori, like Tūranga Māori, wanted to just remain peaceful and carry on their business, Madam Speaker. But it was the war on at Amuru Hakeke Kainga in September 1865, a month, a month after the Waringa Hika siege just up the road in Tūranga in November 1865. And those wars, Madam Speaker, then enabled the Crown to move in to Te Wairo as they did in Tūranga and confiscate 
and put re magisters in these areas to ensure that the land that was obtained was obtained under due res, Madam Speaker. And these generous people who are above us have paid enormously in the land that was taken, in the life, loss of life, Madam Speaker, and like I mentioned earlier, those that were sent to Whare Kauri without trial. Madam Speaker, I want to acknowledge those that filed the claims in the 80s and who are no longer here. I want to acknowledge the negotiators who have been mentioned here. I want to acknowledge Johnny Farnga. I want to acknowledge Tamati Olsen and all the negotiators that have worked really hard on bringing the deed of settlement to fruition. I want to acknowledge the ministers, the Honourable Chris Finlinson. I want to acknowledge the Honourable Andrew Little. I want to also acknowledge OTS officials. And of course, I want to acknowledge the work of the Māori Affairs Select Committee, who did a wonderful job uh, in seeing and um, see, having submissions on this particular bill, Madam Speaker. But in the time I've got left, Madam Speaker, as we heard in the pōhiri in the hall across the debating chambers, this is about the future. This is about tato tato o te wairo trust. And I want to acknowledge the initial trustees that are gathered here today for your stewardship in, since the deed of settlement was signed until the final reading of this bill, Madam Speaker. I want to particularly acknowledge the four ohu, the pillars that these people have worked so tirelessly around. The work plan, Madam Speaker, the engagement plan, and then the settlement matters, and of course the operational services. Madam Speaker, this uh, settlement bill and the people that it has been read for have prepared themselves well to receive all the assets uh, that is coming to them, Madam Speaker. I want to respond to my colleague, the Honourable Willie Jackson. When he asked the question, where shall we be investing in? Where shall we be investing? Can I respond to my colleague that the responsibility of health, housing and education, Madam Speaker, rests with the Crown? Yeah, yeah. Madam Speaker, it is the role and the responsibility of the Crown to address not just the social, but the cultural and the economics and the environmental needs of the people of Te Wairo. So, I love my colleague here, but I, th I think he's off, off, off cue when he thinks that the $100 million should be invested in that. I have every faith, Madam Speaker, I have every faith that the leadership of Ngā Hapu, Ngā Iwi, o Te Rohe, o Wairo will make the wise decision, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, can I acknowledge our rangatahi, our tamariki who have joined us here today, Madam Speaker, because if we're talking about the future, they are our leaders for tomorrow. And I want to acknowledge those that are here with us and witnessing an event that is going to open up so many opportunities for themselves, Madam Speaker, for the wider Wairoa district, but for Aotearoa New Zealand. Madam Speaker, I'm very proud to stand here in support of the people of Ngā Hapu, Ngā Iwi, o Te Rohe, o Wairo. I wish them well. I wish them speedy returns to their homes, Madam Speaker, and I look forward to working as we continue this journey on the East Coast. This East Coast, the jewel of Aotearoa New Zealand, the place that people need to come to to see, Madam Speaker. And this settlement is going to aid and abet the opportunities for the people of Te Wairo. And Madam Speaker, I can't wait for that to happen. I can't wait to work alongside them. This coalition government is ready. Mr Jones is ready to come into Wairo. He made commitments about opening the railway line from Napier to Wairo. And Madam Speaker, it is indeed an honour, is indeed an honour to stand in this House to commend this bill as the third and final reading of Ngā Hapu, Ngā Iwi o Te Rohe o Wairo Settlement Bill. I commend it to the House. Kia ora tātou.
order. Ko te pātai ki a whakaai tia te mōtini, te hunga whakaai ki a ki ai, te hunga whaka he kao, kei nā ai. Government Order of the Day, number two. Tariff PACER Plus Amendment Bill, third reading.